Hello and welcome to another Learn Learn Scratch tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how we can create a sequence memory game or copy the sequence game. So let me demonstrate. We press start, it says welcome to my game and it says click the sequence and all you have to do is whatever sequence it says you just copy it. There you go, so if I do it wrong it will tell me game over and it will tell me how many I got correct, which is two. And it'll tell you to press the green flag to try again. So let's get started. Click on create. There we go. And we'll leave scratch here for the moment. Uh, in fact, actually, what we'll do here is say, okay, when start clicked, let's get scratch the cat to say, welcome to my game. So here we go. Welcome to my game. Copy the sequence. There we go. Brilliant. Nice and easy. So at the start of the game, it says, welcome to my game. Copy the sequence. Brilliant. So we've got that working there. And we need to also add a new sprite. And let's add, we'll just add a button for the moment. There we go. So we've got the sprite, the cat, uh, cat sprite. And here's a button. There we go. So here are our buttons. Let's get the button going. Uh, when this sprite is clicked or when this button is clicked, what we'll do here is we'll make it pop by making it slightly bigger, waiting a tenth of a second, 0.1, and then we'll make it smaller again, change size by minus 10, and we'll make a sound, play note 60. There we go. So it says welcome to my game. Copy the sequence. There you go. And if we click on it, yay, it makes a sound. Brilliant. Good. So that makes a sound, which is great. And now what we need to do is we need to remember what button, uh, what sequence of button uh, buttons has been pressed. So here, if you imagine, we've got two buttons here, and that one's button one. That's button two. In fact, let's change button two to a different color. Color the shape. Let's go We a red color for a moment. So let's imagine it goes one, two, one, two. We need a way of remembering the sequence of buttons that's been pressed. So how do we do that? Well, what we do here is we say, okay, uh, let's go to the stage, click on data. And a sequence of numbers, which is the button numbers that have been pressed, is really just a sequence, uh, a sequence which is a list. So we'll create a list and call it uh, pressed. Uh, there we go. Uh, in fact, we'll call it button pressed. Button pressed, so we know. There you go. So there's a list of button pressed. There we go. And what we'll do here is each time one of these buttons is pressed, we'll just add it to the button pressed list. So what do we do now then? So here you go. When this uh, sprite's clicked, change the size. Uh, wait 1.1, 1, 1. change the size, play notes. There we go. And now what we'll do is we'll add, that's button 1. So we'll just do 1. Add 1 to button 1. Do the same there. But here it's going to be add 2 to button 2. There you go. So now... If you watch my list of button pressed, if I click there, it adds, and it's remembering which buttons have been pressed. Brilliant, perfect. So we've got it uh, playing, uh, every time we click it, it remembers which one has been clicked, which is great. So what we also need to do here is we'll say, okay, at the start of the game, we need to get rid of the, this, empty this list out. So let's just delete everything from the button press list. So start, there you go. Start the game, everything's deleted. Good, and there's my button press list. Brilliant, good. So we've got a list of buttons that have been pressed. What we also now need to do is we need to uh, add to the sequence. So what we can do here is let's create a, uh, let's create a uh, broadcast here. And what we can say here is, okay, when I receive add to sequence, 
Each time I receive add to the sequence, what we need to do is we need to add another number to that sequence, either one or two at the moment. Later on, it's going to be like one, two, three, or more. So each time we receive add to the sequence, what we'll do here is, oh, in fact, we'll need another one, which is the sequence list. So make a list, and let's call that sequence. This is the actual sequence. Good, there's the sequence. And again, at the start of the, at the start of the game, let's delete all of sequence, which is great. But let's make that a bit bigger. And here, when we receive add to the sequence, all we need to do is we need to pick a random number uh, from one to two, which is great. And we need to add whatever that random number is to the sequence. So let's try that. There you go. So brilliant. So we've got the sequences there. Good. The one that we want to display. And our button press is also there, which is brilliant. That's okay. Brilliant. So now we've got the sequence and we've got the button press, which is great. What we now need to do is we need to do another bit, which does plays the sequence. So what we'll do for the moment is we'll just move this out of the way. Down. In fact, I'll leave this there on the left hand side. We'll move that button up there for the minute. So what we need to do now is we need to create a new script called play the sequence. So let's do here, let's go for another, um, do another broadcast. And let's call this play the sequence. So we need to play the sequence. What, what does that mean? Well, it means that we need to go through each item in this list. We need to repeat through it. And each time round, we need to find the number that's at that point of the list. And we need to uh, get the button, the appropriate button, to display. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to go through this list. And we start in the list here, the, start, uh, the sequence list at number one. So what we do is we use a variable and call this the, uh, let's call it this the, uh, position uh, that's the position in the list and here we go when we receive play the sequence well oh, no has that gone set the position to one at the start so we set the position to one because we want to go position one of the list and then we do a for loop a repeat but how many times do we need to repeat well we need to repeat once for we need to do it for each item of the list and actually we need to repeat it here eight times because the length of the list is eight so we go to the data we go to this one here which is length of sequence and here if you click on it you can see at the moment it says eight and we repeat it eight times so what do we do eight times well what we do here is yeah length of sequence uh, what we do is we go to that item in the sequence and we need to create a variable here called uh, current, uh, what's that one, current, well let's call it selected current, no current, current button number, there you go, current button number, so because that's the one we want, the current button number, so ID the first time that's going to be 2, then 2, and then 2, and then 1. So how do we do that? Well, repeat the length of sequence. We set the current button number to item number. Well, it's not going to be number 1 each time. First time it's going to be 1, then 2, then 3. So it's going to be the item position variable of the sequence. Set the current button to item position of the sequence. Um, and then what we need to do is we need to broadcast a new message and this one is going to be called um, play button there you go play button so we've got play the sequence which is going to go through the whole sequence each time round we're going to broadcast the actual button play button uh, play button at that point when we receive it when I receive play button what we can say is okay if the current button number is the same as my number then we will uh, 
do the same as when the sprite is clicked will we'll make it make a noise so play button so if the uh, current button number equals current button number equals and this particular one is button one there you go then we will do all of this bit here except for that last bit because we're not we're not pressing the button this time so we'll just put that in there there we go so we'll do all of that bit there there we go there we go now what we actually want to do here is instead of just broadcast play button um Actually, no, that's okay. That's fine. Now that whole bit there, where's it at? Play, play button. So that's going to play the button. But we're also going to need to wait a second. Otherwise, it will play all of the buttons instantly. Um, let's just try that now. Let's see what happens there. So play, broadcast, play button. Set the current button number to the item position of the sequence. Broadcast the play button. Wait a second. Actually, then what we need to do as well is, because the current position is going to start at 1, each time round, it needs to increase by one as well. So it sets the current button to whatever that item is there. Broadcast play button, which makes the button pop. It waits a second. And then what we need to do is we need to change the current button number by one. So then it will move on to the second item, then the third, then the fourth. And it will do that eight times. It will go through that sequence eight times. So that's OK for there, which is fine. Uh, we're going to need that one in here as well. So let's just copy that script over to there uh, and change that to button number two. So hopefully now, if we go back to the stage just to test it, when we do play the sequence. Oops, I know what I've done wrong there. Here, uh, current button equals one. Um, if current button equals two. If current button equals one. Let's just have a look at that. Have I done that right? Done something slightly wrong there. Let's have a look. Two, two. Ah, okay. Can you see here? It's constantly stuck at the number one. Uh, let's have a look. Because it's not current button number, that should be change the position in the sequence. Slight error on my part there. Let's just try that again. Two, three. Brilliant. That's okay. That's good. Excellent. What we'll also do here is instead of putting note 60 there, let's just change that to 62. So now, if we click on play the sequence, brilliant. Done. Excellent. Good. Good. So that's all done. So what we got there? Well, we're getting somewhere closer to what we need now, which is good. Uh, we play through the sequence, and that sequence will get more interesting at the moment. It's only got two, so it's not very interesting. And also, we've got the bit that checks if the button's been pressed, and it adds it to the sequence. But what you also need to do now is we need to find out if um, each time after our buttons are pressed, when we've pressed the same amount of buttons as the length of the sequence, we then need to check that the button order has been co correctly pressed. If it has, we delete the button press list because we want to start afresh. We need to then play the sequence again. So that, uh, uh, sorry, we need to add one to the sequence and then we need to play the sequence again and then the whole thing goes over again. So how do we do that? Well, what we also need to do here on the button is say, okay, when we've been clicked, down here at the bottom, if we have been clicked and uh, we've added our button to it, after we've added our button pressed to the button press list, we need to check to see if uh, the length of this list is the same as the length of this list. And if it is, we need to check the whole sequence. So that's quite easy. So here, if and we need an equals, if the length of the sequence is the same as the length of the uh, button press list. There we go. Then we need to do another broadcast called check the sequence. 
check the sequence. There you go. Good. And we need to check the sequence to see if it is uh, any good. Good. All right. So let's have a look. So how do you do that? Well, go back here and what we do here is we go. OK. When I receive check the sequence, what have we got to do? Well, um, when we receive check the sequence, we know that if um, if it has if we got to this point here, uh, these two must be of the same length. So what we need to do now is we need to do a similar thing here where we're going through the entire list. And for each item in the list, this time, we check to see if the two items are the same. Or, rather, we check to see if they're not the same. So we assume uh, if they are the same, it's all good, and we keep moving on to the next item. But if something is wrong, if they don't match, we stop the whole thing, and we end the game. Because that's it, game over. So, how do we do that? Well, we do a similar sort of thing to here. Again set the position to start at 1, because we're going to count through at 1. And we need to repeat through the length of the uh, either of the list. It doesn't really matter which list. Uh, let's call it sequence. Uh, it doesn't matter because they're both going to be the same length. That's OK. And what we say here is we do, we do things slightly in reverse. Now, what we say is we say, OK, if they're not equal, so if not and we need to go and get the item. Du, 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 du. If not, oh, where's my equals gone? If not, item, not number one, but item position of sequence uh, equal to item button. There we go. There you go. So, we go through the entire sequence. Uh, oh, no, hang on, not repeat sequence. Repeat length of sequence. Oops. Repeat the length of sequence. Okay. If for each item, if that item uh, at that particular position of the sequence list uh, doesn't match the item position of the button press list, then we need to broadcast game over. Broadcast game over. Game over. And broadcast game over, and then we'll just stop that whole script. So let's kill that script. Stop this script. There you go. So if you receive check the sequence, you broadcast game over and stop that script. Um, if it doesn't, um, if um, if it doesn't match, then what you do is you change the position by one. There we go. Change the position by one and then go back through. And that way the position will go then to number two. We'll go all the way through again to number three, four, five, six, etc., etc. If you get all the way to the end of this loop and you've looped through eight times and checked everything, then what you need to do is you need to reset the whole checking process and add to the sequence, which is great. So if it doesn't work, what we'll do is we delete everything out of the button press sequence because we're going to do um, a new button press sequence. We'll start again. Uh, we're going to add to the sequence so we can just call that um, call that broadcast again. Do another broadcast. So we'll add another one to the sequence. Um, also, we need to say, okay, well done. Get the cat to say correct. So let's do another broadcast and let's call this um, correct. Correct. Broadcast correct. Um, wait a second while the cat says correct. There we go. And then we need to play the new sequence, which has been added to. So again, we could just call that last one of these broadcasts. There we go. And that's really, really useful. Broadcasts or functions, depending on what you're doing. Um, they're really, really good because you don't have to keep recoding stuff. You make the code once and you just call the function as many times as you need it or the, or the broadcast in this sense, this one. Um, so what we got cat here, we got to, to handle the two situations when I receive game over and when I receive 
correct. So when I receive correct, that's nice and easy. Let's just say correct. Good. Uh, say correct. And when I receive game over, say game over. Game over. Uh, for two seconds, and then we can tell them their score, can't we? So, how do we work out the score? Well, it's quite easy. If the um, if the sequence gets to three items wrong, long, and they get the third item wrong, then their score is going to be two. Uh, if it gets to five items long, and they get the fifth one wrong, then their score is going to be four. So, their score is effectively going to be five, or whatever their the length of the sequence is, minus one. So what we can do here, nice and simply, is we'll use a join, or a couple of joins here, stick one inside of the other, and there we go, and we can say, you scored, there we go, that score is going to be the length of the sequence, minus one, and then we'll just put space there, in fact, put a space after scored, otherwise the numbers will be stuck together. Scored, space, there you go, and here, space, uh, you scored, and then we'll do points, or whatever you want to uh, call it. Good. So when I receive game over, when I receive correct, that should all now hopefully work. Um, what we also need to do here is we need to say, okay, when uh, after we press start, when we've received play the sequence, I'm um, sorry, we need to do the first play the sequence here at the start of the game. So how does that work? Well, we'll get the cat to decide that because he's doing the talking here. So on start, welcome to my game, copy the sequence, and he can start the game now. So he can say, okay, uh, add to the sequence because it'll be at the, at the start of the game, it will be zero. Right, hopefully now we'll add to the sequence. Let's have a look. Yeah, add to the sequence. And then we need to play the sequence. Play the sequence. There we go. So hopefully now, welcome to my game. Copy the sequence. There you go. Uh, yeah, well, that's somewhere near. We're getting close. So I'll just work out what's gone wrong there. Uh, we'll work out what's going on there in this. Oh, hang on. Have I... Ah, there you go. That's why. Because what I've done here is I've added all the extra code onto this button, but not added it onto my second button. So what we'll do there, rather than keep moving it over, delete the second button, duplicate the first button again, change this to, if current button number is two, uh, add two to the button pressed, and um, we'll change that sound to a different sound there you go so hopefully now if i start welcome to my game if i actually let's change the color again there we go let's try again so let's test this copy the sequence so there's two press it good correct two two correct well, this is getting a bit repetitive one two three You normally don't get this if you've got three or four uh, numbers, but uh, obviously here, because there's only two numbers, the odds are 50-50. So, one. There you go, so it's starting to change. And hopefully now it should say game over. You scored four points. There you go, which is correct, because the sequence length is five which is brilliant. Good. Also, might be an idea as if when you do get game over, let's hide these buttons. So what we can say here is, okay, uh, when I receive game over, uh, when I receive game over, let's hide, 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 looks, hide the buttons. Good. That's that one now. Let's try that there as well. So we've both got that. And uh, when start button clicked, we need to show them. There we go. We'll do that as well. Let's copy that there. So hopefully now, start the game. Welcome to my game. Let's have a look. There 
There we go. There you go. Game over. Perfect. And when you press start again, it appears. Good. So there you go. We've got the basics of the game. Let's just hide. Now we've got all our uh, coding out of the way, the main bit of the coding. Let's hide all our sprites. All we need to do now is uh, let's add some more sprites. Duplicate the sprites. There we go. Uh, and let's this time, let's put, that's number three. Oops. Three. Change that to 64. Four, and that's number three as well. There you go. And let's add another one. Just, oh, let's uh, paint the costume in there. There's number three. Let's add another one. Keep duplicating these. Put four. Again, just keep moving the, the, the sound up there. Uh, that's number four. So I'll do it with four. You could do it as many as you like. Uh, it'll work, should work fine for however many you want. Four, four, let's change that to 55. Good, that's okay. All you need to do here is I've got four, let me change the costume color to pink. There we go. And let's space them out, which is good. Let's space them out nicely. All you need to make sure here is on your scripts where it says pick random between one and two, you need to change that to four. And now, hopefully, let's see if this works. There you go. And that's it. That's pretty much it. So that's about it done there. Um, what I'll do actually as well is I'll just go here, fill with colour, uh, and we'll do a nice little uh, change the background colour as well. You can play around with it, uh, which is all good. Uh, but there's the basics of the game. It's all done. Nice and simple game. Uh, but I should imagine if you start doing uh, quite a few colours here in a big circle up to 10, it's probably going to get quite complicated, uh, quite difficult for the user quite quickly. There you go. So what could you do to improve this game? Well, uh, I would say uh, a start screen where it says, uh, you know, a pretty start screen here. We a start button. That would be a good way of doing improving it. Um, you could also do some background music. That would be another one. Uh, you could also do here at your game over screen at the end, instead of just the cat saying game over, you could do a background where it says game over and then displaying the points using, um, instead of actually just saying the points, you could use uh, one of these numbers down at the bottom here uh, and actually uh, get it displaying the actual number. Um, that would be another way of doing it. Um, you could have a high score table. Um, all sorts of different things. You could have different difficulties, and that's how many different buttons there are. So if you select difficulty easy, it's only got four buttons. If you select medium, it's got six. And if it's hard, it's got ten. You know, those sorts of things. There's loads of things you can do with the game. Uh, as always, if you like the tutorial and you want to see more, do make sure you subscribe to my challenge, uh, channel. Uh, and uh, if you like it, click like it. Any comments, any recommendations for future games, just let me know. Add them in the comments on the YouTube video. Thank you very much.